Hey everyone, it's Cervante with Revolver Mag, and I'm sitting here with Christina Scabia of Lacuna Coil. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing really well for my living room, for my Celtic uh, part of the living room. <laughs> that looks awesome. I'm sitting here in like jungle land. <laughs> yeah, here, you can say, oh, okay, this is, this is, this is. Yeah, there is a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of stuff, like a little museum. Too much stuff, I'd say. Well, so we're here to talk about Black Anima, uh, Life yeah. from the Apocalypse. Yes. And so we have that actually, I think it's going to be on a transparent orange variant. And we're going to have the double LP with a DVD and LP booklet and stuff um, over at shop.revolvermag.com. So y'all can definitely get that because that's exclusive to us. The orange one is. Yes. But I know I'm excited for that. No, I, it, looks it looks fantastic. I only saw the yeah. picture. I can't wait to, to actually have it in my hands and look at it. Okay. So about the live album, a few questions. Um, one of the things that I was wondering about, especially since things were a bit different in Italy than they were here in the States, like last year, you know, but logistically, how did that work out? with you and the rest of the band trying to coordinate this live stream for your fans oh my god it was uh it was a big pre-production yeah i just answered like oh my god is the hardest <laughs> answer know. ever no it's just that in my mind i'm going through uh, the 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 feelings in in that mm -hmm. period because he was september last year uh yeah. so we were right in the middle of the pandemic uh right into it and uh we were probably one of the first bands who actually approached the streaming thing um a lot mm. of bands did it maybe in their living room or in um or in a rehearsal room but mm -hmm. we really missed the stage so we really wanted to perform on a stage we wanted to feel again the sensation that you get when you're on a real stage uh, so it was a big pre-production of just like renting a lot of backline uh, to get in touch with all our roadies and extra roadies to to make the streaming possible. Uh, a, a worldwide streaming is not re very easy to to handle. It 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 seems easy to make, but it was very very difficult to organize. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember that there was a lot of excitement because, of course, um, we also rehearsed. So to be back with your band, but separated from each other, everybody wearing a mask, uh, mm -hmm. and the same was for our crew. It was extremely weird. Um, so I remember that the day of the concert, I was very, very excited to be back on a stage, you know, just to get changed in the dressing room. But I still remember the silence. I still remember the emptiness of the room. And it wasn't even a, a feeling that you would have uh, while you while you make a video, while you film a video. It was mm -hmm. very aseptic, but still keeping the excitement of the band to be on stage. It, it's really hard to describe. And then it was possible for a, a small group of people. So, you know, some of our relatives were there. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm talking about like maybe 10 people groups in the old venue and they couldn't even wow. cheer they couldn't even stand up they couldn't say anything so it was like playing in front of a jury of ghosts and it was even harder on stage because we would have to keep the distance from each other so we couldn't interact right. it was it was very very weird but i'm so happy that we did it because as we played, it was magical. Uh, it was amazing to sing. I'm sure it was amazing, you know, for my colleagues to to sing and play. Mm -hmm. It was very weird at the end of it because we were in the dressing room getting changed and there was no noise outside. There were no fans that could, you know, support the show and give us energy. Right. And I remember I was the last one remaining in the dressing room because some left already. And I was just like there in the silence, you know, soaking into it, trying to remember as much as I could for from that moment, you know, because sometimes you say, I will never forget this. I am sure that I will never forget that moment in this pandemic because <laughs> because I, I, I will never be able to, you know, no matter 
no matter if we'll go back to a normality, I think this year and a half really, really signed me in, in bad ways and good ways as well, because it made me realize about priorities. It made me realize what's important. It made me mm -hmm. learn so many new things. I've learned a lot about, about the computer area. I opened an, an account on Twitch. I just opened my merch line. So it, it forced me to do something completely different and reinvent myself. And it took me to places where I probably would have never go if there if it wasn't for this pandemic. So it was a really changing and challenging year and a half. <laughs> oh my, of course. Well. With that then, especially when you you mentioned priorities just now, after recording and doing this live stream, how do you think this process will kind of affect how you approach touring and recording and stuff going forward? I don't know. I mean, I have to say that now, even in people, I see a more relaxed face because, you know, with the vaccines, it seems that, you know, as I said, the numbers are going low. Uh, mm -hmm. They are slowly reopening. So it is also like a psychological process. So you see that you can stay out more, uh, you can eat in a restaurant. So slowly you're going back into normality. Uh, most of the shows have basically been planned for last year, uh, for, for um, the next year. So mm -hmm. I think that by then we will be prepared. But it will be very strange. <laughs> it will still right. feel weird. But I, I, I think that we will all be very happy to go back, um, you know, on a tour bus, on a on a stage, to get on a plane, to reach, you know, some places on, on Earth. I really miss traveling. I really miss traveling. Where do you think would be the first place you would go once things open up fully? It depends from the regulations, because if they still request you know, the test, it's something that you kind of have to prepare in advance for. And it, it is it's still really expensive here in Italy. It's like 100 euros, you know, to get the, the test that, you know, in order to travel, you can do you can do the test, you know, with a, just like a drop of your blood. You can get it for 20, 30 euros in, in the pharmacy and still offers 90 percent of like um of uh, real results, but like if you want to fly, I think they they ask for a specific test that you need to book in advance. And I don't know if I want to go through this stress. So I will be more than happy, you know, to travel around Italy anyway, because they close the regions for quite a lot. So I will be happy to travel in Italy first and then to go wherever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Send me everywhere. So another question about the live album. So I'm not really sure, I guess, the process of it from the performer's side, but you had mentioned how, you know, you had like the small group of people who were able to be in the actual venue with you, but were you able to have some type of like, I don't know, like a screen or something up to see like some of your fans who may have been viewing it live? No, because uh, oh. there was the chance to have a sort of a fake applause that people could send Ooh. from home. But... Okay. Uh, we tried it during the rehearsal because basically we did the same day we did the whole rehearsal of the show as it was a real show because uh, the cameraman needed, you know, to, to, to kind of see how we were moving on stage. Mm -hmm. um, but then we decided to not to use it because it was really sterile. Like, can you imagine just like... <sighs> <laughs> it was like no 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 let's let's keep it keep it as it is um we only had in one part of the show we kind of had um because we had led screens behind us mm -hmm. so we could project we could play you know with some lights and we saw some of the faces but honestly we were so focused on the show and to keep the position and try to follow the cameras that we were really really focused on on this so mm -hmm. unfortunately we only saw the reactions after we played you know we have read the comments and uh, you know we have seen the feedback but there was no way for us to see what was going on and we couldn't even see ourselves so then after the fact when you were able to see some of the reactions and stuff um which i guess songs during the performance did you get like the most like ah you know reactions out of the 
the fans that you were able to see afterwards? I didn't get uh, any specific like comments of one song in particular. Uh, there is um, a different version of the song Save Me that we did at the mm -hmm. end of the set um, that got a lot of... Um, a feedback because it was different from the rest of the set. It was a piano mm -hmm. and voice and I was wearing like a beautiful dress. So it was very, very beautiful to see. But uh, for the old concert, we got like an overall reaction. Everybody loved it. And they didn't point out any specific song, which which is good because that means that we kind of played everything <laughs> decently. Um, I don't know, maybe the most appreciated songs are the songs that are most uh, maybe most known from the record because there are videos for it, like Sword of Anger, for example. Um, but also songs like Vinificium, which is very, very epic. And I think that the, the guys who filmed the show did a, did a good job. You bring up something too I wanted to ask you about, which was the, um, the Apocalypse version of Save Me, which, because I listened to the live album, I didn't get to actually watch it yet, but I listened to it yeah. and that version, it was just, it was such a perfect way to sum up the whole performance but i'm wondering how did y'all go about making that type of stylistic choice of it just being you and a piano and like doing that song in that way we already used the pianist we play, we already uh, did something with sylvia the pianist uh, when mm -hmm. we did the show that was a celebration of our 20 years together in uh, in the show in london uh, so we have decided to do it again. So we rearranged it and we only rehearsed once or twice because we couldn't really even go to other people's house. Uh, so that's that was another difficult thing, you know, because we basically rehearsed a few times. And uh, I also had a little problem in my in ears at the beginning of the song because I couldn't hear her perfectly. So it was very... Uh, a very genuine, you know, show <laughs> because we couldn't really rehearse it that much. But um, but that it happened because we knew her already, and uh, Marco, our bass player, did um, basically a new version of it together with her uh, mm -hmm. because Marco cannot play piano, but of course can you know play play a keyboard programming it. But there are things that only if you play an instrument you can know. So they worked right. it together and then I, I stepped in and I was like, okay, this is the music. I'm going to sing over it. Why did y'all choose Save Me versus any other song, I guess, to rework in that way? I honestly cannot really tell you, maybe because of the lyrics <laughs> themselves, you know, because they're really, they're really sad. And also there are some songs that are uh, more, uh, they have a simpler structure and I'm saying as a as a good thing, not and not not as a bad thing, that mm -hmm. when they are stripped to the core, they are good in any version. Uh, I think it it's happened. It happens for every artist who just wants to do like an acoustic version of a song. They always go for the stripped down to the core uh, version of of one song, so they can reproduce it in different ways. And mm -hmm. uh, Save was just perfect. Mm -hmm. And I would say lyrically, really paired up with the, with just your vocals and the piano so well. Um, another question I had, had was, like, when y'all went into doing the live stream originally, was it always the plan to, I guess, release it as like a DVD and on a as a like live LP and stuff on its own, or did you decide that after the fact? We decided that after we decided that after because, um, you know, as I said, when you're planning a DVD, you use uh, like a completely different type of of mm -hmm. setup. You have a lot more people working on it, uh, but we already spent a lot of money on this show uh, without even knowing if this money would ever come back. We really just wanted to offer a good show uh, with a, good lights, a good uh, sonography, uh, new stage clothes. We treated it as a real pro show. Um, but we didn't think about release it. We did it because a lot of people asked us to do that. And we thought that it was a good idea to freeze something like this in in time you know to never forget mm -hmm. uh, that specific moment oh i love that um 
And so have you been working on new music during the quarantine? Not during the quarantine because we didn't want to force the fact that because we were home, we had to write music. We always thought that okay. to write music, you need to be inspired. And inspiration mm -hmm. comes from the outside, comes from experiences that you have, uh, things that you live, at least that this is valid for us. You know, everything we do in a regular life, in a normal life, enriches us and gives us inputs that we can put in our music. Um, mm -hmm. And also we like to write it together. So if if Marco creates, you know, the, the basis of the music together with the other uh, musicians in the bands, then Andre and I jump in with the lyrics and the vocal lines, but we do that together. We need to enter in songwriting mode. So we didn't really like the fact that we had to write separately just because we have to put a record because it's quarantine. Now we are starting to collect ideas because we feel a little bit happier. We didn't want anything connected to the negativity of, of the pandemic. And I think that's such a good point too that you bring up. There was such this weird like productivity pressure I felt like, especially last year when people were like newly at home and trying to find ways to like fill that time because they're not oh, used yeah. to not having their schedules packed. And like, it's almost like there is this weird guilt or something that if you didn't produce yeah, so something- that's what like I, that's what we didn't want to. I mean, mm -hmm. that's why I used my time to do something completely different because I know that what I did that is completely different from what I usually, I usually do, uh, will make me start again to do what I did before with, with passion, with the same passion. I was just afraid mm -hmm. that it would, if I would have used all the downtime making music when I didn't really want to, it would have had a negative, um, influence on me. And it would have mm -hmm. been like, I really don't want to do that. And I also wanted to prove myself that, yeah, music is my main passion. I love what I, what I do for a living and I hope that I can do it until the day I die. But I also wanted to show myself that I can be capable of doing something else as well. Thank you so much for Thank talking you. to me. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure yes. to talk to you. So Live from the Apocalypse comes out soon, right? Yes, it's June 25th. There we go. June 25th. Everywhere, right? Yes. Be on the lookout for Life from the Apocalypse comes out June 25th. We'll have the transparent orange one over um, in the Revolver store, shop.revolvermag.com. And thank you again, Christina. This was You're so much fun. Absolutely welcome. Thank you so much. And grab the record. <laughs> it's limited edition on Revolver. Hey, there we go.